Most of you are here in, because in some way you spend a lot of time in contact with young people. And um, we're going to talk a little bit, let's see, about teen pregnancy, but mostly about emergency contraception. So again, I encourage you to make this as interactive as, as you would like and to ask questions as I go along. Um, one of the reasons that emergency contraception uh, is, has been heralded as such an advance in women's health care and in adolescent care is its ability to prevent unintended pregnancy. Um, this gives you an idea just visually of how South Carolina ranks in terms of teen pregnancy rates across the country. Um, so just to orient you, the darkest states have the highest teen pregnancy rates. South Carolina is um, 79 per 1,000. The 165, which is the highest, was D.C. Uh, that was really kind of an aberration. Most of the ones in the highest bracket were somewhere between 79 and 89 um, teen pregnancies per 1,000 teens in that state. So you can see that South Carolina, along with Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada, and I think Delaware, um, fall into uh, the worst quartile of states in terms of how we're doing with the rate of teen pregnancy. Teen pregnancy, I don't really have to tell you guys, has a huge impact for teens. So just medically, if you become pregnant when you're a teen, your pregnancy is more complicated. Specifically, they're more likely to give birth early or have a premature baby, and their babies are more likely to be low birth weight or very low birth weight. And then socially, teens who become pregnant or become moms also are less likely to finish their education, they are more likely to live in poverty, and their children are more likely to become teen moms. So from a public health perspective, we stand to gain a lot if we're able to delay pregnancy until a teen is ready um, or prevent unintended pregnancy. That's not to suggest that a teen pregnancy can't be happy and healthy. I know we all in this room probably invest a lot of time in making that happen too. But when we're thinking about emergency contraception, our opportunity is to hopefully prevent unintended pregnancy for teens. All right, this is sort of a, um, a test question to make sure that your little clickers are working. So the first question is, EC is used after unprotected intercourse, true or false? You can either press one or two and, okay, it looks like it's working, awesome. Sometimes it can be a little finicky as newfangled things are. Okay, so most of you um, felt that this was true and that is correct. Uh, emergency contraception or EC, I'm gonna use the term EC mostly, but just to be sure we're all on the same page, that means emergency contraception and that is a post-coital, meaning after sex, method of birth control. Um, it is not as effective as using things prior to having intercourse, but it is a great uh, method for backup, meaning it's much more effective than doing nothing at all. If you find yourself in the situation that you've had sex without protection and you're worried that you could become pregnant. Another question, a student could use, or a teen could use EC in each of the following situations except someone who is on birth control pills but knows that they missed a couple of pills uh, this month, someone who used a condom but it broke, someone who has had a positive pregnancy test after they had sex, someone who is forced to have sex, or someone who had sex without protection. Which of all of these are acceptable uses for EC except which one? Awesome. So um, this was one of the questions on the pretest, but reasons that someone might use EC are numerous. The first being that they just found themselves in a situation where they were using no protection when they had sex. I would say more commonly it's someone who was trying to use protection but thinks that it might have failed. Um, for example, someone who's using birth control pills but knows that they don't remember to take it every day. And uh, that is the majority of people in the U.S. who are using birth control pills. So in one study at least, um, adult women on average miss three pills a month. So that is probably higher in teens and adolescents. 
So this one of the reasons that um, IUDs and Implanon are really coming forward as ideal methods, because it's so hard to remember to take a pill every day. Um, but that's one instance where we find that emergency contraception is useful. If someone did use a condom, but they think that it broke or they know that it broke, if someone is not sure that the guy got the condom on in time, that's also a time when I really encourage teens um, and anyone for that matter to use EC. Um, and sometimes you can tell that the condom slipped or leaked or you're worried about that, that would be a time to consider it. There's some cases, especially with teens who maybe have less background knowledge and less negotiation skill where they're actually just not sure if the guy was protected or not. Um, and in cases of doubt, I definitely recommend it. And then of course it's become standard of care for any victim who, is, um, ha who has been forced to have sex to offer them emergency contraception if they want it. It's not designed to be used if you know that you're already pregnant, if you've already had a positive pregnancy test. Um, it will not harm a pregnancy if you're already pregnant, but it won't be effective. And that's a time to refer them for options counseling, um, not to try EC. Which of the following cannot be used as emergency contraception? So all of these are actually methods of EC, except for regular birth control pills, the copper IUD, the Depo-Provera injection, Plan B, or um, a prescription medication called Ella. So this was definitely a harder question. Um, all of these actually are methods of emergency contraception except for Depo-Provera. We're going to spend most of our time talking about Plan B because it's non-prescription for a lot of um, people and it's easily accessible. But actually, Plan B, there's a new prescription medication called Ella that is a very effective emergency contraceptive. The copper IUD is what I call the old kid on the block. It's actually been available for EC for a long time, and not surprisingly, it has caveat caveats to use, but it is the most effective. It's really effective, 99% effective at preventing a pregnancy if inserted within five days of unprotected sex. And then we can actually also use regular birth control pills in a modified fashion. So I'm going to spend most of the time making sure you understand um, Plan B. But at the end, I'm going to be sure that we cover the other three possibilities, just so that you, you know, feel like you're leaving with accurate information about those options. For just a very brief history, I mentioned that you can use regular birth control pills. So Dr. Yuspi, I think I'm saying it right, um, in the 1970s came up with this concept that you can actually use multiple regular birth control pills from your pack to prevent ovulation. And this is now known as the Yuspi method. And that was all that we had for a really long period of time. Um, in 1999, Plan B was finally approved by the FDA and packaged as an emergency contraceptive. And a decade later, in 2009, the FDA gave us permission to use Plan B behind the counter. And we'll talk about that. In 2010, the new medication, Ella, was approved in the United States. It's actually been around in Europe for about 10 years, so it's not really new, but it is new in the US. So true or false to this question, pills in Plan B are stronger doses of regular birth control pills. True or false? So 88% of you thought that that was true, and that is correct. So when we think about regular birth control pills versus Plan B, regular birth control pills, for the most part, um, have both estrogen and progesterone, two hormones that um, are very similar to the hormones naturally found in our bodies, um, and they work by preventing ovulation. Plan B is a higher dose of the progesterone. So Plan B doesn't have any estrogen, so it doesn't have exactly the same thing. It's not exactly the same thing as the regular birth control pill, but it is a higher dose of one of the hormones found in birth control pills. That's an important distinction um, because there's so much confusion in the press and in the public about 
emergency contraception or plan B with the abortion pill. So I just like to be sure that people understand they're actually different um, and plan B is very similar to regular birth control pills. It's not similar to the abortion pill. So there's also now so many options of plan B. So um, as to avoid confusion, I want to be sure that everyone kind of understands what is available in the pharmacy when you send someone. These are basically all the same thing. Plan B at the top was the original product that came out and it has two pills. You can see the two pills there in the picture. And originally they told us to take them 12 hours apart. So if you got a package of Plan B, you were supposed to take the first pill, wait 12 hours and take the second pill. Lots of science said it's okay and actually as effective if not more effective to go ahead and take both pills together. Plan B has been around for a while so it's now available in generic form. Next choice is the generic version of Plan B. They're basically exactly the same. So it'll come as two pills, but you take them both together. And then Plan B one step, yes, it's, it's the same status. Yes, so it is available as a generic form now and has been actually for a few years. That's not as well known. Because what's marketed now is Plan B One Step, which is their new and imp improved version where they just put the two pills together. So Plan B One Step comes as the same dose but in one pill. And of course they can charge full price for it because it's new and it's still on patent. It has no gener generic version yet. Any idea what next pill is? The last time I checked, and to be fair, it's been a couple years. The cheapest place in town to get it was Planned Parenthood, and it was twenty-five dollars. It's thirty-five now, and I'm, and, you know, and I don't know for sure how that still compares to generic version. Yeah. So when I called Publix recently to compare Ella and Plan B, they were both about 50, 54 and fifty-seven, so somewhere in there, and that probably varies a little from place to place. When Okay, another true false question. Um, I think I may have already answered this one, but EC is a type of abortion, true or false? <laughs> oh, you don't have a clicker, do you? <laughs> So, excellent. 93% um, of you are correct. EC is not a type of abortion, but there is so much confusion about that. So how does Plan B work? Um, I hope this is not insultingly oversimplified, but I'm just going to review kind of basic biology before I talk about how it works. So, this is a picture um, of the uterus, the fallopian tube, and the ovary. Every month, the ovary makes eggs and one of them becomes the superstar egg and gets ready for ovulation. It spits the egg out into the fallopian tube, which is what's happening right there. Um, if there are sperm hanging around, the egg gets fertilized and it spends the next four or five days traveling down the tube and then it eventually arrives in the uterus where it implants on the endometrium, which is the uterine lining. So the way that EC works to prevent this from happening is actually by preventing ovulation from happening. So the progesterone hormone um, has an impact on the body to actually prevent ovulation. What that means is it's not going to be effective if someone takes it 12 hours after they ovulated. And that's why it's not as effective as using something prior to sex that prevents ovulation because the timing of it is important. So when we think about whether or not Plan B causes abortion, abortion methods act here. After um, a pregnancy has implanted and begun to grow, the abortion pill would have an impact right there. So Plan B does not cause an abortion, and the other forms of EC are similar. Uh-huh. Apparently, some 
Well, um, I, I have tried to engage people in that discussion to understand that belief, and I don't really understand how they've come to that conclusion. It's not a scientific argument, but most people who are in that camp put contraception of all kinds, including the birth control pill, EC, and abortion in the same category, and they're just kind of anti-totally. But scientifically, like I was just showing, EC works much earlier than that. It works to prevent fertilization. So long before an abortion would even be possible, EC has its ac action. And fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, if you're already pregnant, it's not going to work. So um, this is a new question. A 17-year-old male student asks you for plan B. You advise him to go to a local pharmacy, to have his girlfriend go to a local pharmacy, or to have his girlfriend get a prescription from her doctor. There's some abstainers on that one. This was a tough one, and I will admit that this is something I learned in preparing for y'all's presentation because I don't take care of men on a routine basis. This was not something that I knew. But <clears throat> when we think about who can get Plan B without a prescription, anyone now who's 17 years or older, and this includes men, can walk in without a prescription and obtain Plan B. That means that anyone who's any women who are 16 or younger must have a prescription. So could not get it no matter what without a prescription. We talked a little bit about the cost and I always like to make this point because it is wonderful that we can now for some people get it without a prescription for anyone 17 and older. But there's a large group of people who have say Medicaid or other types of insurance that actually cover Plan B or types of emergency contraception. And for those people, if they have a prescription, it will be more affordable, most likely, depending on the pharmacy, if they're not paying out of pocket. <clears throat> no. So, yep. No. They cannot get a prescription. Because you would have, it's kind of like buying cold medicine. You don't necessarily have to take it yourself. You could go in and buy it for someone in your family, for example. Um, but if you have a prescription, it's designated for you. Yeah, so it is not for men to take, but they can obtain it in the pharmacy. I don't think anything bad would happen to them, but most men don't want to play around with female hormones. Yeah. Um, so I also want to make the point that it is behind the counter. So that's an important distinction. Something like Advil would be considered over the counter where you can just walk into a store and it'll be on the shelf and you can pick it up yourself and walk out and pay for it and buy it. Behind the counter means that you actually have to still go to the counter and ask someone at the pharmacy for it because they keep it. They probably make you sign something, show your license. I'm not exactly sure. Probably like Sudafed now. Um, so it's behind the counter. So I make sure to tell everyone, especially um, young women, that because I think kind of like buying condoms people feel a little skittish when they're going in and they're kind of embarrassed and so if they look around on the shelf and they don't see it they're probably gonna hightail it out of there so I try to have that conversation up front with them like hey this is awesome it's available to you but you actually do have to go up and ask for it so and parental parental I'm sorry permission is not required um, that was one of the questions on the pretest as well. Um, although it's definitely not required for 17 years or older, even for younger teens, as physicians at least, we can prescribe them contraception if we feel it's in their best interest without parental permission. Okay, to prevent pregnancy, a woman must take Plan B within 24 hours. True or false? This is another one of your pretest questions. Um, false is correct, although if you take it within 24 hours is the most effective time to take it, but it could be extended later. So when we think about when to take Plan B, you can take it any time up to five days after unprotected sex. The um, 
package is going to say within 72 hours, which is three days. Okay, that's how the FDA approved it, so that's what the box says. But there's a lot of science that supports um, taking it up to five days and that it could be effective up to five days. So anyone that's asking you about it who's had sex unprotected within the last five days would be a good candidate and may get some effect from it. That being said, the sooner they take it, the more effective it's going to be. So if they can take it within the first 24 hours, that's ideal. Um, but that's not to suggest that there's no purpose in taking it, you know, if they're at day four or day five. What about this one? EC is not as effective in preventing pregnancy as regular birth control pills. True or false? So a little bit more um, spaced across. I mentioned that regular birth control pills, I, I think this is exactly how it was worded on your pretest. It might be a little bit misleading, but the answer to this is true. Whether you're using, um, well, I mean, how well does it work? So whether you're using, um, if you're using your birth control pills as a form of EC, the way I described and I'll talk about a little bit longer, then packaged or prescribed or marketed Plan B works better. But Plan B does not work better than using birth control pills or any other method prior to having sex. So that's an important point. It's really a backup for birth control prior to sex. The ideal is definitely birth control prior to sex. Um, Plan B reduces your chance of getting pregnant after unprotected sex by about 75%. So that's pretty dramatic. It's not as good as the 92, 95, 99% effectiveness of the things that we can use prior to having sex. But it's still much better than doing nothing at all. As I've already mentioned, I'm, I think you've probably taken this point home. The sooner you take it, the better it works. There's also a question about how often you can take it safely. So there's no limit to how many times in one cycle or how many times a year you can take it. The um, point that I'd like to make is if you have someone who's taking it multiple times, it's a perfect time for intervention to talk about why that's not effective and why they should be using something um, kind of constantly before sexual intercourse. But from a medical perspective, there's no reason that it's unsafe to take it multiple times in one cycle or multiple times throughout the year. I think I've made that point. Okay. So another question. There are no known long-term side effects of EC. True or false? So, true, that is correct. When we think about birth control pills, um, this is less a factor in teens because so many teens are pretty healthy. They haven't yet developed a lot of chronic medical issues. But there are a, kind of a whole list of reasons that some women with chronic medical issues should not use regular birth control pills. And we talked about the fact that there's the same hormone in regular pills as there is in EC. Um, however, because you're only taking Plan B, like a little snapshot in time, it's not something you're exposed to every day like you are to a birth control pill, no medical conditions are considered to be a contraindication or a reason not to take emergency contraception. Um, and it has no known long-term side effects, including if you happen to take it, um, let's say you had a, a negative pregnancy test, so you took it, and then two weeks later you find out that you were pregnant at the time that you took it. It doesn't harm a developing pregnancy. For people that you come into contact with who have taken EC and they're wondering what's going to happen now, um, the most common side effect, although even this side effect is not that common, is nausea. And in terms of getting your period after you take it, most people will get their period within the month or the four weeks after they've taken EC. Um, but it may not be a totally normal period. So it might come a week early, it might come a week late, it might not be the same length or the same amount of flow that they're used to having. 
but they should get their period within a month after taking EC. And if they don't, they should be concerned about pregnancy and take a pregnancy test. Um, I actually encourage people that I talk to about EC to go ahead and take a pregnancy test two weeks later, no matter what, to confirm that it's negative with the idea that anyone who has a positive pregnancy test, I'd like to get into options counseling sooner rather than later. Um, so that if they're opting to terminate or opting to initiate prenatal care, they can get to those respective places quickly um, and have things you know, run smoothly. <coughs> so have you guys ever heard of Ella? This is just for my curiosity, yes or no? <laughs> before today, before today. Too late, you've already pushed your button, right? Um, so for at least uh, three-fourths of you are close, you haven't. And it's been uh, around now for about a year, approved in the U.S. for about a year. But they haven't really done any hardcore marketing, so a lot of people still haven't heard of it. So Ella... Um, Sorry, this is a blurry picture, but it's Uli Pristal Acetate is its kind of trade name, but its marketed name is Ella, much more pleasing. And it's also approved, and this one's actually FDA approved to be taken up to five days. But really, that time frame is the same as Plan B, although the boxes will say something different. They're both within five days after unprotected intercourse. Ella is a different medication. So ulipristal acetate is a medicine that blocks progesterone receptors. So it works very, um, you know, at, at a scientific level, it works very differently than plan B. But it still has its main way of preventing pregnancy is by stopping you from ovulating or spitting out that egg. So their mechanism, um, although it's very different in the underworkings, the result is the same, that you don't ovulate if you've taken this medication, or your chance of ovulation goes way down. The reason that Ella is um, a great advance for us is that it is actually more effective than Plan B, especially on days four and five. So I mentioned that Plan B, as you get day one, day two, three, four, five, away from your, your episode of unprotected intercourse, the, the effectiveness of Plan B goes down, down, down. Ella actually is equally effective throughout that time frame. So that's a big advantage of Ella, is that it's more effective, especially when you're talking about someone who uh, is four, five days out from their episode of unprotected sex. The major disadvantage at this point is that it is prescription only for everyone, no matter how old you are. So that represents a barrier for some people to actually getting it. Um, I don't anticipate that that's going to change the way that it did for Plan B. I suspect that it will remain prescription only because of the you know, scientific differences between the, the medications themselves. So that kind of leaves us with the question, if we're talking with teens or you know, dealing with them, when should they use Ella instead of Plan B? So I would say, especially if you're dealing with someone who has come to you on day four or five after unprotected sex, if there is a way for them to um, effectively get a prescription, Ella would be the preferable method. If there's not a way for them to get a prescription, and they're 17 or older, it's still, you know, please encourage them to use Plan B and go to the pharmacy to get that. The YUSP method, which is just using regular birth control pills, but in a modified fashion, uh, has been around for a really long time. It is not as effective as Plan B or Ella or using an IUD, but it is more effective than doing nothing. And the advantage of it is if you have someone who's already taking birth control pills, who can't access these other ways, they have it with them. They have the capability of doing it already. Um, this website, ec.princeton.edu, which is actually a place where you can find lots of information about emergency contraception, but specifically they have the list of birth control pills that you can use for EC. And there are about 20 different brands. Um, and they tell you exactly, take five of the pink pills um, all at once, or take four of the pink pills or six, or whichever, depending on which pill you're taking. So um, 
you know, if there's someone who can't get one of these other products for some reason, but they're already on a birth control pill, there's a pretty good chance that what they're using already could be adapted that month to give them protection. And that's called the Yespi method, after Dr. Yespi, but it's just using regular birth control pills. And then last but not least, I mentioned that you could use a copper IUD. It is very effective. Um, copper IUDs in general for birth control work because copper is such a potent spermicide. So copper IUDs are as effective as getting your tubes tied, but they're reversible. And they have the added benefit that they could be used for emergency contraception. So this is ideal for people who come in needing emergency contraception who also indicate that they're interested in using an IUD for their birth control method. If they're within that five days, we can place the IUD, it's very effective, and then they just continue using it. It's not a good method for someone who's not interested in using the IUD but just wants you know, to prevent pregnancy right now. And teens, of course, we select very carefully for IUD use, but many of them are good candidates. The old thinking was that you know, before you've had a baby um, or you've ever been pregnant or if you're a teenager and you might have multiple partners that you're not a good candidate. But within certain parameters, teens are actually great candidates for IUDs. And so if it's something that they mention, of course it re requires a visit to a doctor, um, but some people might be really good candidates for this. And I would say this is the most effective option um, that we can give. But most, most teens are gonna you know, prefer one of the others. So in summary, I would say that Plan B is very effective for backing up your birth control, but again, using something prior to intercourse or using it as an opportunity to talk about the benefits of abstinence um, you know, are key. When possible, take it right away, but any time up to five days after unprotected intercourse. And that's true for Plan B, for Ella, for the YESP method, and for IUDs. It does not cause abortion. It does not harm a fetus if you accidentally take it before you realize that you're pregnant and you decide to continue your pregnancy. You haven't done any damage to your pregnancy in that, stint, in that instance. It's available behind the counter for girls and boys who are 17 or older. And again, behind the counter means you have to actually ask for it. It's available to, to people, women, that are younger than that if they have a prescription. And so for um, the few of you who might be seeing them in a setting where they're in a clinic, having an advanced prescription is often very useful for 16 and under so that they um, don't have to go through the system to, acqu re to acquire their prescription after unprotected sex if they already have it with them in their bag or they're at home or what have you. Most OBGYNs. Um, it's a good opportunity if you have someone who needs EC or is asking you about EC. That's a great opportunity to talk to them about abstinence and other birth control methods that they can use prior to sex. Um, but those two things are not mutually exclusive. They can both get EC and ideally initiate another method. Or if they're on something that they're not using that effectively because they're missing pills, etc., switching to something more effective like an IUD or an implant. And Ella, which is new and prescription only, would be the preferred method because of its increased effectiveness if they have the ability to um, access a prescription for it. And if not, Plan B is still a great choice. Even though Ella is No, no, no. Ella is equally effective throughout, but if you, it works by preventing ovulation. So you don't want to give yourself any window to miss taking it prior to ovulation if possible. If you were to wait till day four to take it and you ovulate it on day three, you've missed the boat. But unlike plan B, which every day, even if you take it before ovulation, every day its effectiveness decreases the longer you wait. Ella has the added advantage of being equally effective days one through five, but you still have to take it prior to ovulation. And most people don't feel when they ovulate, so the sooner the better to be sure that you get in that window. Does that make sense? What other questions do you guys have?
see any of these forms, I think we covered it, I just want to make sure I heard other information elsewhere. Do any of these forms actually present the fertilized eggs in the pattern of the uterine wall? Like, I would say the copper IUD probably has that as one of the ways that it works. Um, the other methods are all prevention of ovulation, so prior to fertilization. The copper IUD uh, is a very potent spermicide, and so that's probably one of its primary mechanisms, but it also does cause kind of a change in the uterine environment that might make it difficult to implant after fertilization. It's the only one that would fit into that category. Mm -mm. They're pretty comparable. You know, a few people report nausea, a few people report a headache, but by and large, because it's kind of a one-time dose and it's pretty low, both of them are not associated with many side effects. I don't know for sure about Ella, but I think that it does. But I, I would have to double check. Can you find out? Yeah, that'd be great. Other questions or real life scenarios that you've had that I didn't talk about? All right, in that case, I would just say go forth and <laughs> help them, help them do many things, one of which would be prevent unintended pregnancy. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. You are so welcome. And turning your little clickers up front. Quite fancy technology.